Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt, and this is Team Chicago Challenge. I'm out here on Fox Lake. I'm with my friend Pete Bellendeer, and we're in his cool boat. Behind me is the Mineola Hotel. Now, how important is Mineola Hotel to me? Well, this is the first place I ever raced on the ice. I had a crappy bike, and I put tire, put screws in the tire, and we came out. We would just be a bunch of guys would come out. Pete, who was the son of Emma, he would make a little track out here. We would just race around for fun. In 1977, I talked to Emma, who owned it at that time, and I said, what if I promote ice racing and we'll do a regular weekly program? So in front of the Mineola Hotel from 1977 to 1987, we put on almost probably 10 races every winter. We always had a good group of people. In fact, Bill Wilt, my good friend Bill Wilt, he raced out here with me. You know, Bill Wilt that does a TV show. In fact, when Bill Wilt got injured, then he became my starter too. So a lot of good friends, Al Bloom, all my good friends. This is where we would come and we raced motorcycles. So for that 10 year period, and also, it was also 1977, that I was promoting Team Chicago, which was a team race idea at Santa Fe Speedway. It was also in 1977. So because I was promoting, because I was promoting races here, it also gave me credibility with Howard T at Santa Fe Speedway. And then we also had team races here. So that was part of you would Santa Fe Speedway with professional racing, they added an extra race. So the motorcycle ice races from 1977 to 1987, I promoted all those races here. And back then, I think the entry fee was like $2 or maybe $4. And I, I was happy after giving out trophies and everything, if I made $100 as the promoter, I was more than happy. Because at that time I was also Coffee Dan and in the winter time you don't make as much money on the coffee truck as you do during the summertime. So it would supplement my income. But Mineola Hotel, I mean I've got posters, I've got brochures, I got everything that I put together back then. Mineola Hotel was a big part of the beginning of Team Chicago. Because like I said, 77, 78 Santa Fe Speedway. 77 to 87 Mineola Hotel. In 86 is when I finally started a TV show. I wish I would have shot some TV from here. I have a little bit of film from here. I don't have any TV shows from here. And the Mineola, that would make a great backdrop. But I'm gonna show you some of the articles from uh, Psycho, Psycho World and Psycho News about with the mini O in the background, I got some great pictures there. Also in this show, besides we're gonna do a whole tour of the Channel Lakes to show what a what a what a magnificent thing we have right here in northern Illinois. But I'm also gonna show you because I did a couple shows from uh, with the Extreme Motorsport with Bob at Extreme Motorsport in Hammond, Indiana, and we did jet skis. I did a couple jet ski shows. I'm going to show you a little bit of footage of some jet ski racing I did. I haven't even looked at this footage in probably 20 years, 25 years. I'm going to dig some of this footage out and look at some of this racing that we did with jet skis. But thanks to my uh, good friend Pete. We're going to meet Pete a little later. He's going to tell us a little bit more about this wonderful boat that we're on. And we're going to tour the Chain of Lakes and I think you're, it's a pretty interesting TV show. Pete Bellandier has this lovely boat. I believe it is 17 feet long. It has a 454 Chevy V8 engine. As you may or may not know, every Thanksgiving morning, Thanksgiving Day morning, motorsports enthusiasts from throughout Chicagoland and surrounding areas gather at the Rock. That is south of the Museum of Science and Industry and it honors the first automobile race 
held in America. This is where I met Pete. We've been getting together every year for the last five or six years. And Pete has finally invited me to go on the chain of lakes on his wonderful boat. And he's backing it in, so I gotta put the camera down and give him a hand launching this boat. We are right here. Correct. Okay, we're gonna hit the st we're gonna go around Pastake. Right. We'll go up Nipper State. We go under Beer Can Bridge. Right. We'll go through uh, Nipper Seat Lake. Up towards Grass Lake. Here's Blarney's Island where they have the Oh that's where uh, Blarney's Island is. The boat races. Right. Then we'll go up to uh, Lake Marie. Then take the channel into Channel Lake and Lake Catherine. Now I grew up uh, on Lake Catherine during the summer. Then we'll come back. We'll go through uh, Lake to Lake Marie again. Then we'll take the uh, uh, ch the Long Channel coming back through uh, Pet Petite Lake. Then into Fox Lake. We'll go past Milliona Marina right here. Right. And then back and around the Burkhead Bridge and back down here. Past McDonald's. Our drive-in McDonald's. You can drive in with your boat to park and go inside and have your McDonald's. <laughs> okay. As Pete gets past the no wake zone, we are on Pastakey Lake. This lake is right. south and a little west of Fox Lake, where I did the show opening. There is no real speed limit out here on the chain. Now I'm only estimating, but I would say the boat is going approximately 50 miles an hour. It's an inboard engine, a big Chevy, big black Chevy. And with no boats on the lake, it is super smooth. Look out the back, you can see how nice and smooth this boat is running. See all the houses along the shoreline. $15 a day. Huh. Now I think it's about $600 a day. <laughs> well, that was long. 
long, long time ago. That's before I got into motorcycle racing. All right, there's the uh, river. You can enter the Fox River here, go south, join the Illinois River, go west and south, and join the Mississippi River just north of St. Louis. Then you can take the Mississippi River all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. There are some folks that will say that this is part of an international waterway regulated by the federal government. Okay, so explain uh, what no wake zone, what kind of speed limit are we talking about? Uh, supposed to go as slow as you can. Supposed to. You're looking at four, five, six miles an hour? Or? Yeah, you're not, uh, as little wake as possible. Right. Now here's a boat similar to mine with two outboards. As long as we're going slow, tell me a little bit about this boat. Did it come with the four, now you got it with a 454 or four? It came without an engine. Came without an engine. Yeah, my, uh, it's been sitting in a garage for, I don't know, a bunch of years without an engine. The guy that, the guy that had it before me had a uh, uh, factory engine and put a blower on it. And supposedly, supposed to be do 120 miles an hour out of the factory. Now he told me he had it up to 110 and chickened out. <laughs> I don't believe him. Well, where would you be able to do 100 miles an hour? Anywhere here. Really? Take a look. Wide open. Yeah. Okay, so you got this boat with no engine. No engine. And then, uh, so you put, where'd you get this engine? Did you buy, is it, was uh, it a short buddy, block or was it? No, 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 my buddy bought a complete engine out of a, out of a, a cruiser. And, uh, yeah, we, we So it was a, an, it was an engine for a boat. Oh yeah. Not a car a, engine converter. Yeah. So uh, we uh, got all the parts we needed to put it together and put it in this boat. And uh, uh, it ran good for a stock engine. Uh, fairly decent, and then it started making a ticky noise, so we pulled the engine, uh, sent it to the shop, spent, uh, what, about uh, seven grand, and uh, had the whole thing gone through, 30,000 over, uh, uh, speed tuned and everything, and uh, put it back in, and uh, this is what you have now. So this is carbureted? Well, uh, four barrel carbureted. Right. Is that a holly I seen on there? Is that a Carter? Or? A holly. Holly. Right. I forget the size, but uh, yeah, brand new carburetor. And a whole bunch of other new parts we put in. So what is? So with the 427 punched out. 454. 454 30, punched out. Okay. Thirty thousand silver. Right. And what about the drive on this then? So this is uh, Bravo One uh, outdrive. Right. Uh, with uh, right now we got a 24 degree pitched uh, prop on it. Uh, Bravo prop. Just had the prop uh, back from the shop. Uh, they they tuned uh, the prop up because I cupped the end <laughs> and did a blade. Well, that's an art in itself, is uh, setting the props up, too. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. There's a shop near Midway Airport. Uh, that's all they do. On Central Avenue? Yeah, yeah. I've been by there. I mean, that's, that's their whole j job is... Uh, yeah, that's all they do is props. Uh, matter of fact, I think they do airplane props, too. Mm. 
but a whole different invention between an airplane and it. Because some of the early airplanes that they were planning were try had props that looked like props of a, for a boat. And they spent huge money. And the Wright brothers, this is the genius of the Wright brothers. Their prop that they designed is still considered an 80% efficient prop. 80% efficient? And they, six foot piece of wood that they whittled themselves to make the prop. I mean, they would had wind testing that they did on their own. They had their own wind tunnel. So the genius of the Wright brothers is quite great. Here's Bear Camp Ridge, the north of Bear Camp Ridge. A lot of times you'll see, during summer you'll see this all stacked up with beer cans underneath. So we just went under 12. Highway 12. Fox Lake, Illinois. So we're going to go to the left here to go? No, we're going to go straight. Okay. Well then we'll be going by the Mineola. Miliona will be on our, uh, on our around the point on right, our right. Uh, right. Some patriotic resident of Fox Lake has put up this gold Statue of Liberty. And when you're on Route 12 heading north, you could spot this statue if you look to your right if you're heading north. So we're entering into Grass Lake now. Yeah. Matter of fact, you can see Blarney's Island over there, where they have the drag races. Right. And... But I thought Grass Lake was real near, shallow. It is. But how about where they drag race? They... Jet boats. Oh, they're all jet boats? Mostly jet boats. So it's, it's jet boat is like a jet ski that the prop is internal. Yeah and it basically uses the thrust to get them going. Uh, I guess that's the tunnel. theory. That's the theory. Right. Well, that's why on a jet ski, you know, they're safer because there's no prop to worry about. When we talk about jet boats and jet skis, let's head back to 1998 when I had an opportunity to race a jet ski on Lake Michigan in Muskegon. Classes, dead start, the way for the horn. And at the sound of the horn, they'll start their engines and take off as they wait for the horn. And this is the start of the first 45 minute 40 minutes and one lap on this offshore course. It's approximately one mile down. We're a thousand feet over and one mile back. Here comes Bob Stuckrack, the owner of Extreme Motorsport in Hammond, Indiana. One of my Yamaha sponsors and he's riding the Skidoo. And here's the guy has been racing. He's been running the closed course stuff. He's never done one of these endurances. So you watch Bob head down this front straightaway. You can see the chap is starting to pick up. But picking up third place in the amateur runabout was Bob Suckrick, the owner of Extreme Motorsport in Hammond, Indiana. And I had a chance to talk to Bob as he talks about the difference between this endurance racing and closed course racing. So you've been doing the sprint racing or the closed course, they call it, and this is the first time you're doing uh, endurance. So uh, what should we be looking for? What is the difference? 
Okay, the indifference on the endurance racing, uh, it's basically, it's your machine equipment, the reliability of equipment, and also the rider. Uh, who can hold on the longest is what it basically comes down to. Um, on a close course race, close course is you're only out there for about 17 minutes compared to 45 on an endurance. Um, so basically on close course, you're pretty much, you're, you're working on, you need, you need all your power right now, you don't have to worry about being that long, of being out there that long. So. Okay, so how do you think you're going to do out here? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, I think. I'm going to play pretty good today. And now we're watching the staging for race number three. This is beginner runabout and amateur ski, and this is the event I'm going to race in. There I am on the Yamaha, the Extreme Motorsport Yamaha. I already got my engine off. I got my hand up, hoping that if I show that my engine is dead. People will, um, you know, they'll think about starting this event. And we finally got the start, and I got to race in my first offshore Great Lakes endurance race. And I'll tell you, this is a lot tougher than it looks. This was really tough. I'll tell you, I got maybe charged for the first thousand feet, and I almost went over the bars six or eight times, just in this front straightaway. The waves come at you in every direction. I tell you, these guys that are good at this, I give them all kinds of credit. They are definitely in shape. They are in much shape as any motocrosser, soccer player. This is tough racing. You want to go fast, you better be in shape. But it was fun. I have to stop by Bob on Kennedy Avenue in Hammond, Indiana, Extreme Motorsports, drop them off a copy of this show and the show from 98. Entering what lake? Uh, lake Marie. All right, so we're entering Lake Marie. So we're getting up near Antioch now? Oh yeah, yeah. Get real close. Matter of fact, the other side, it might be considered it, uh, the town of Antioch, All right. part of the town of Antioch. So they built the house to look like a boat. Yeah. Then when, on this, when it had panel wheels on the side, it looked like a river boat off of Mississippi. Well, if they had a channel on both sides, they could get their electricity turn into wheels, right? Yeah. <laughs> and now we're going to go through Channel Lake to Lake Catherine to take a look at Pete's grandmother's cabin. So that building on that side. The yellow on, on that side, uh, right. To the left of that white boathouse. But back then it was only a summer. Yeah, summer, summer. So do you guys have plumbing then? Um, well, well. You had a well. Water. Oh yeah, we had. Matter of fact, we had well water for fresh water and lake water for uh, plumbing. Right. For toilets and stuff. Pete said he spent many summers as a teenager on the Chain of Lakes, water skiing every day. Another channel. We're going yeah. under 173 again. Yeah, same one we came. Uh, we're under. running. We're running. We're, we're in running, Antioch. We're going back to Lake Marie. Right. the sandbar? Just the sandbar? Yeah. Okay, we're looking at the sandbar resort just south of Antioch and this is where we had ice racing probably from 19... Uh, I was doing it, I just started doing a TV show so it had been no, 1990, 1990 to about 1995, 96. This is where they had the uh, motorcycle ice racing for three or four winners. 
Yes, there was some great racing action at the sandbar. In fact, Dave Hendrickson, who used to work for U.S. Cable, now worked for the Bears, that's where he learned how to race motorcycles. It has been many years since I've been on a boat. In fact, it was over 50 years ago the last time I water skied. When I think back at the Mineola, all the great friends that I made and the great folks that I got to race with on the ice at the Mineola Hotel. Well, as we travel underneath US Route 12 one more time, this was a great day on the chain of lakes. We head underneath US 12. We're gonna head over by the McDonald's so you can pull your boat right up to the back of McDonald's on 12. Yes, I had a great time on the chain of lakes and I hope you enjoyed this adventure. And a special thanks to Pete Bellandier for a wonderful boat and some great inside information about the Chain O' Lakes. Contact me, it's tdan45 at gmail.com. I love to hear from my audience. I love to hear what you think about these clips on YouTube. And remember, you can always search on YouTube with Dan Schmidt Motorcycle Racing. And I highly encourage you to plan a trip to the World of Motorcycle Museum of Indiana 39. They're in Winnemac. But that's four miles south of North Judson. Give them a call first at 574-896-3172. It's a great trip. It's a great collection of motorcycles.